These two women are traffic guards, and when one of them orders a car to stop on the roadside, the other is at a loss to understand why she is ordering the driver to stop. The two sisters inside the car also don't understand what is going on, and the driver just says that they need to see what the guard wants. Her coworker questions what she is doing, and the woman replies with ignorance that she is going to check the documentation of that car. Meanwhile, the driver explains to her sister that they are driving as the law dictates, so they have nothing to fear. And the younger sister thinks that they will still be late for their appointment, but the older sister says that they need to get out of the car and respect them, because if the traffic guard asked them to, it's because something is going on. The guard appears at the window asking for the driver's documents, who quickly hands them over, and then the policewoman asks for the car's documents. But her co-worker still doesn't understand why she is doing this, but the woman doesn't want to be questioned, claiming that she is the authority there, and that until that moment she has only seen her work questioned, and orders her to let her work in peace. After all the necessary documents are handed in, the policewoman asks for a moment to check the entire situation of the car and the driver's license. After a few seconds, she tells the driver to get out of the car, and the woman ends up asking if there is anything wrong, but the policewoman orders her to get out of the car, being totally ignorant. Then she gets out of the car, promising her sister that everything will be fine. The policewoman explains that apparently everything is fine, but would like to ask how a young girl like her can have a car like that. And her co-worker scolds her, saying that if everything is correct with the documents, she should let the girl go, claiming that this is not the kind of question one should ask. And the policewoman wants to know why she is being questioned again. Then the driver explains that she got the car as a gift from her father, for having passed the vestibular. Meanwhile, the sister decides to get out of the car, and the policewoman is deboshing the girl. The younger sister shows up to ask if everything is okay, and the policewoman questions who that child is. She replies that it is her sister, but the child is already very anxious, and calls her older sister leave, because they are late. And the driver asks the child to calm down, because her father taught her that she should always respect people. The policewoman says that she needs to check the vehicle, but is questioned again by her co-worker, who wants to know what she is going to check in the car. But the policewoman claims that she has already lost patience with her, but the co-worker doesn't give up, and says that she will report the officer's behavior to their superior. And the policewoman only says that they will have a conversation later. The girl then interrupts the two women, just to try to explain that her car has no irregularities. But the policewoman doesn't want to hear it and pushes her, not wanting to have her work questioned, claiming that she is going to check her car. She gets into the car while the two women outside are watching. The policewoman checks every corner of the car in order to find something that could put the driver in trouble. But after some time of searching, she finds nothing in the car. She still tries to find something to blame the driver, but finds nothing again. After some time, she gives up and get out of the car. And the driver only asks if she can now get in her car and leave. But the policewoman doesn't want to let her go, and claims that she saw her run a red light and that she was driving faster than the allowed speed for that street. And the driver denies that information. And the policeman thinks that the girl's documentation is actually false and claims that will check the documents, because she doesn't believe she is old enough to drive. She tries to convince the policewoman that she is old enough, and her co-worker tells her that this has gone on long enough, and walks away to make a call, in order to file a complaint against the police officer who was disrespecting the driver. Then, she reports that her supervisor has been abusing her authority for days, that she is giving unnecessary fines, and looking for problems where there are none. The attendant understands that this is a very serious complaint, and says that she will register that request, 
and that she will ask their superior to check this information and thanks her for the report. Still, the policewoman keeps insisting with that girl, wanting to find irregularities in her document, so she decides to call the central office to check a register. The other officer tells the girl to stay calm, because she sees that everything is okay and she has nothing to fear, and ends up apologizing for the officer's ignorance. The girl knows that everything is alright, but her concern is to be late for her appointment, and the officer asks for patience, promising that it will be over soon. The child is already tired of this situation, and asks her older sister to call their father, but the girl doesn't want to call her father, because she knows that she is not wrong and that the policewoman has to let her go. So the policewoman ends the call, realizing that everything is okay with the tires, but she sees a mark on the car and wants to know why, thinking that the girl may have run over a motorcyclist, but the girl is already running out of patience with all that questioning, she claims that she doesn't owe explanations on such matters, but anyway explains that her three-years-old sister just scratched the car with a key, but the policewoman doesn't believe her story. From a distance, the superior eventually sees that there is some confusion going on, and goes behind them to check it. He greets everyone, and the policewoman's expression changes completely with the arrival of her boss. He questions what is going on there and the policewoman explains that she is doing a verification. And the superior just wants to know what's wrong with the car, and wants to know why she's checking everything out. The policewoman is embarrassed to say that there is nothing wrong with the car, so she says that the driver ran a red light and drove faster than allowed. Then the superior calls his daughter's attention, saying that he asked her not to drive at high speed, not being able to believe that she was doing it. But the daughter tries to justify that she was not speeding. The policewoman is surprised to find out that the girl is her boss's daughter, but still continues to say that his daughter was driving at high speed. But the other officer interrupts the conversation and explains that none of this was happening, leaving the boss confused about what is going on there. Then the officer tells him that she needed to file a complaint against the policewoman because she is abusing her authority in traffic. And the boss asks if this is true, but the policewoman can't answer, being hesitant to speak. And the officer continues to say that his daughter was driving correctly, and that she saw when she was stopped, that she was wearing her seatbelt and so was his other daughter. Then the officer reveals that if he searches the system, he will find a lot of complaints about the police officer, as she is giving undue fines and is behaving very abusively. And the officer tries to defend herself, claiming that she is trying to do her job as best she can, and the other officer is on her cell phone the whole time. But the boss doesn't care about her justifications, and calls her attention by saying that she shouldn't treat people with ignorance. He says that he had a better view of her as a person in the traffic department, but he doesn't know what to do with her anymore. Then he says that he will check out all the complaints she has been receiving, and if they are true, she will get a three-month suspension. Just then the policewoman gets nervous, begging him not to do this, because she has bills to pay. But her superior is adamant, claiming that she should have thought of that before she went around mistreating people like that, and she knows that the department is unforgiving. She begs for forgiveness, asking for one more chance and promising that she will improve. But the boss tells her that she has to, because if she doesn't change her ways, he will be forced to demote her. He then addresses the officer who made the report, telling her that she will take on her new position as traffic supervisor. The news makes her very happy, because she was very much in need of this position. And the superior asks the former supervisor to hand in her uniform, she tries to justify herself, so with no choices, she takes off her supervisor's uniform angrily and hands it to her boss, and the boss realizes that she really won't change. She hands the girl the car key and leaves without looking back. Then the man calls his daughter and congratulates her for her behavior. Because she could have called him, but she stood firm in her attitudes because she knew she was right. 